Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Akiba Rubinstein Saga and today I would like to show you the game from very crazy 1906 uh, tournament in Ostende and not only crazy but also quite strong one. So I'm gonna throw a couple of names uh, who attended to this tournament. So for example Geza Marozzi, Akiba Rubinstein, Osip Bernstein, Richard Teichmann from England, Frank Marshall from USA, David Janowski, uh, Joseph Black Dead Blackburn also came, uh, Mikhail Chigorin, just a ca couple of names. There were uh, 36 players and organizer Isidor Gunsberg, who was pretender to the world champion title uh, just maybe 10 or 15 years before, was responsible for the unusual format because he was totally proud uh, to introduce five stage tournament for all of these 36 players. Can you imagine that? So first 36 players were divided into four groups A, B, C and D and in stage one the guys from group A and C uh, play against each player of groups B and D, okay? And then after the games uh, were played three weakest players are thrown out from the tournament, okay? So we have four groups uh, of six players and then we have the stage two, stage three. So at the end we have semi-finals where uh, we have four groups of four players and they play each other. And at the end, nine best players get to the final. So if you see any uh, table from these tournaments, you usually see only, you know, top nine players, but they were uh, the best of the 36. And the players who get into the final had to play 30 games in this tournament. So that's quite a lot. And this is why Ostende tournament actually uh, can be called chess fair instead of chess tournament. Okay. So of course the older players had the problems with the endurance and the younger players like Bernstein or Rubinstein had much easier job to do. And today I would like to show you the game between Akiba Rubinstein and he is 23 years old and he play as black. He's ranking according to chess metrics 2638 and his opponent Osip Bernstein, he's ranking 2662 and he is also 23 years old and he play as black. And if you want to know who was Osip Bernstein and you don't know yet, Check that game. I tell the story of uh, Ossi Bernstein because in 1917, for example, he had to, you know, play chess for his life because uh, Bolshevik officers wanted to execute him and one of them gave him a chance to play the chess game for his life. And of course, Ossi Bernstein won and then he could escape to France. So that's an uh, all cool story, man. And because he had more stories uh, like that in his life, quite long and successful life. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into the game. Uh, Ossip Bernstein open with d4. We have d5, c4, e6, queen's gambit declined, knight on c3, knight on f6, knight f3, bishop e7, and here Ossip Bernstein didn't go for bishop g5, he played bishop on f4. We have castle by Rubinstein, e3, and c5. So kind of Tarash variation here, very popular at the beginning of 20th century. So black agree to play with the isolated uh, queen's pawn, which is not easy job to do. Uh, D takes on c5, bishop takes on c5, c takes on d5, now knight takes on d5, exchange the knights, e takes on d5, and now this is the pawn for black, so definitely uh, some disadvantage uh, for black. And here uh, Ossip Bernstein play bishop on d3. Uh, nowadays the modern theory would say that a3 is good because of bishop on b4. This was played by Rubinstein and now uh, knight can go to d2, yes, but knight gonna be misplaced here. Um, also uh, king on e2 is possible, but here we have king on f1 by Bernstein 
And here Rubinstein retreat with bishop to e7. This was actually played a couple of years before by Emmanuel Lasker, so a definitely known move. A bishop on d6 was also possible. Uh, Marozzi played that against uh, Bernstein in Barman one year before, so uh, both players are definitely familiar with these lines. We have h4 and now Rubinstein play knight on d7. Knight on c6 would be probably better, uh, Lasker played that, but knight on d7 with of course the idea of placing the knight on f6. And here Bernstein in his analysis actually show a very interesting uh, continuation g4, making the space for the king, uh, but also setting up some traps. So if Rubinstein plays something like rook on e8, making a space for the knight, that actually it's a blunder. And feel free to pause the video. And I know this is not the main line, but it's very nice tactic. So you can try um, to find what's going on in this game while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? Not difficult to spot because uh, bishop on h7 with check wins the pawn and uh, black has to do something. Uh, if they move the king, then of course uh, move back and this attack would be very, very strong. So uh, that's the main line. Uh, and if black actually takes the, the bishop, that would be a blunder because queen on c2 with check and now win the queen. So a uh, pretty nice idea here. However, of course, uh, Bernstein uh, didn't play for that. Uh, Rubinstein is too strong for, for moves like that, for tricks. So he play rook on c1, so getting to the um, open file. Rubinstein play knight on f6 as planned, so now g4 is of course impossible and Bernstein knight d4 blocking the isolated pawn, which is of course a very common idea because isolated pawn can be very dangerous in attack. We have queen on b6 uh, attacking the b7 and here queen on b3 by Bernstein and Rubinstein has to decide what to do. Uh, probably some moves like knight on e4 or bishop on d7 that should be played, uh, but the Rubinstein exchanged the queens on b3. Uh, maybe not really the strongest idea, but uh, that's what he played. Knight on b3 and now bishop on d7. We have king on e2. Uh, if you try something like rook on c7 win to win the pawn, uh, not really the greatest idea because bishop d8, you can win the pawn but then your rook gonna be uh, in some troubles you're not gonna lose this rook but after some adventures the rook has to be you know moved to g5 and this is not gonna be you know happy rook on g5 so uh, that's not the option so king on e2 was played by Ossip Bernstein and now rook f on c8 we have bishop on e5 by Ossip Bernstein and knight on e4. So Rubinstein found a very nice outpost for the knight. Of course, white can't just exchange because uh, black pawn structure would be fixed uh, with, with this move, so that would be impossible. And also losing the pair of bishops, that's also not in the white's interest. Uh, this is why we have f3 by Bernstein, knight on d6 and now knight c5 attacking the bishop. Bishop moves to c6 and now b3. Rook on e8, so uh, black want to, you know, set up some tactical ideas because this bishop is without protection. For now it's impossible to move the bishop, for example, here because the knight is hanging. So uh, feel free to actually consider what is going on in this position that is very, very interesting. Uh, Ossip Bernstein play a4 and now we have knight on f5 very interesting move and uh, now feel free to pause the video and find the move which white actually can keep very nice advantage in the game while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready this is not easy one this is quite difficult so uh, what do we have here the knight is under attack 
the bishop gonna be under attack soon and this knight uh, also under attack so what white can play if something like bishop on f5 is pretty normal move uh, so nothing nothing fancy here bishop on c5 rook on c5 rook on e5 bishop retreat to d3 rook a to e8 and now black stands quite okay here because attacking the e3 so gonna get this and exchange for some other pawn and white is slightly better but it's nothing fancy here the move we are looking for is actually knight on b7 knight on b7 this is the the move which help you to have the advantage what's the idea here so the idea is to actually sacrifice the exchange and i know it doesn't look like the you know exchange sacrifice but check the line so we have bishop on b7 because now bishop is under attack okay rook can take it so bishop on b7 is quite force and now bishop on f5 we have bishop on a3 attacking the rook and also attacking the bishop so white have to do something bishop on d4 this is the strongest move and now bishop on c1 rook on c1 and here could be the problem with estimating the position but what Ossi Bernstein wrote in his analysis is with two bishops control of the c file and play against black weak a pawn white has more than enough compensation for the sacrifice exchange so let's see what he's talking about he has a pair of bishop very strong pair of bishop and also he has open file uh, for himself because of course black not gonna go there okay this is controlled by white so uh, quite good advantage what rubinstein could play it's for example a6 but it doesn't help much for example a5 rook a on b8 and now bishop on d7 attack the rook rook e on d8 now rook c7 bishop on c8 pretty crazy stuff and i don't think anybody would like to play as black this position so bishop on c6 now bishop e6 and now bishop on b6 uh, rook d on c8 exchanging the rooks that could be a plan and now bishop on b7 exchanging the pawns and white stands quite good here and i think uh, probably white could win with this passed pawn that could be possibility but uh, rubinstein played g6 and now we have bishop on d7 forced rook on e7 and rook c7 defending the bishop but also attacking the bishop here and what to play as black the position of akiba rubinstein is pretty bad here if play something like rook on d8 attacking the bishop that's actually losing uh, rook on b7 now rook e on d7 and now rook a7 and after exchanging white gonna win with this connected passed pawn so uh, not really the greatest option and if trying something like rook on b8 that's even worse because now not bishop on a7 that's actually losing but bishop f6 forcing black to uh you know giving back the exchange uh, and now look at the position black can't have any counterplay because eight rank is weak and that would be a checkmate here okay and even even if this pawn is moved then it would be a checkmate on h8 so nothing can be done here so black have to be very passive and white can activate the king and win the game Rubinstein of course knows about that so he try another trick he play bishop on a6 with check king on d2 now rook on d8 so sacrificing this pawn on a7 but now he play bishop on c4 um, and actually Bernstein wrote about this move this is a trick which doesn't help and uh, and let's see what happens so of course b takes on c4 d takes on c4 and now a5 by bernstein we have rook e on d7 exchanging the rooks and now feel free to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white while i enjoy my cup of tea
Okay, ready? Not very difficult, but believe me or not, uh, Ossie Bernstein play a6. He play a6 and actually the game ended in a draw. And this is a fatal hasty action that throws away the win. These are the words by Ossie Bernstein. Uh, what he should play is actually king on c3. And this is the winning move. So rook on c7 defending and now a6. So now this is a big difference. King f8, now a7 threatening the promotion. So rook on c8 and now bishop e5 and this is the plan. Okay, so why this winning they gonna uh, promote and of course black can uh, sacrifice the rook, but that's of course is winning. And if black try to move the rook behind the pawn, which is quite logical, it's not enough because a7, rook on a6, king c4, and now king b5 is coming and it's winning. So for example, king f8, king b2, rook a2, and now bishop b6 with the plan of uh, putting it on a5. So uh, black has nothing to do, rook b2, king a6, rook a2, bishop a5, and of course promotion is coming. So uh, that would be very easy win for white. However, as I said, a6 was played. So if you found the move king on c3, congratulations, you could win against Akiba Rubinstein in this endgame. We have a6 and now Rubinstein uh, proved that he know how to draw this game. Rook on d6 attacking the pawn and of course uh, pawn a7, rook a6, but now is the difference. King on c3 and now rook a4. This is a wonderful move. Now look at this rook. Rook defending c4 pawn. So creating also the wall here and this pawn creates more wall. So black can't approach the rook. You can actually remember this uh, correlation because rook and pawn uh, can cooperate very, very nicely here, you see. And of course, uh, they are both placed on the light square. So dark square bishop can do nothing here. And if white try to get somewhere around that this pawn gonna advance and promote. So uh, it's impossible actually for white to win this. Uh, of course, Ossip Bernstein try. So he play e4. We have h5 by Rubinstein and now bishop e3, f6 making some space for the king, also taking away uh, this spot for the bishop. Uh, bishop on b6 now, king on f7 king d4 and now king on e6 we have f4 by bernstein king on d6 and now f5 locking this pawn on f6 on the dark square so it can be easy target for the for the bishop we have g takes on f5 e takes on f5 and king on d7 we have g3 king on c8 and now bishop c5 uh, so threatening to pick the the pawn so king on d8 now we have king on e4 uh, king on d7 now bishop on d4 attacking the pawn but now king on e7 so king only you know stay around uh, is ready to take the pawn a uh, bishop on c5 with check king on d7 and in this position players agree for a draw and they agree for the draw because white can't do anything here and actually if they try something like king on d5 advance uh, with the king that's actually losing because of c3 what i mentioned before and now uh, white king can't go back of course uh, so they would have to play something, I don't know, bishop d4 trying to find the way, but then c2, bishop on e3, of course, controlling c1, but now rook on a7 and is of course winning. So bishop on d2, rook a1, uh, king d4 and, and yeah, promoting winning the bishop and of course winning the game. So this is why in this position both players agreed for a draw. And uh, as always on leeches I leave the link in the descriptions to the to the study on this game if you are interested and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like this video press unlike leave the comment and if you don't want to miss any other games of Akiba Rubinstein press subscribe smash the bell button Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.